Tonight, a Target 12 investigator's exclusive inside solitary. Imagine being locked alone in a prison cell 23, sometimes 24 hours a day for weeks, months, even years. Segregation destroyed people inside. Your mind, you're not the same. I'm not the same. Opponents say confinement makes prisoners even more dangerous when they're done serving their time. But prison officials tell us it's a necessary tool to keep the prison safe and say it's not the Hollywood depiction of the hole that you may be picturing. Target 12 investigator Tim White got exclusive access inside segregation units at the ACI. He's here now with what he's on. You may not have a lot of sympathy for inmates put into segregation for breaking prison rules, but some question whether the controversial practice does more harm than good for prisoners that will eventually re-enter society. The high security facility at the ACI in Cranston houses the state's worst of the worst. Restrictive housing or segregation is primarily used in inmate disciplinary cases. In a cell for 23 hours a day, a prison within a prison. We've got uh, some folks from the media here. Department of Corrections Director A.T. Wall gave Target 12 unfettered access to disciplinary confinement facilities. That's fine. We met with inmates. I was booked for narcotics trafficking. For inmates. Mental health professionals and correctional officers. You can look through. And you can see and talk to the other people. We encourage them, you know, to force into personal skills. Once a day for one hour, inmates in disciplinary confinement are usually let out in this caged outdoor area for rec time, normally five days a week. We're told the prison doesn't have the funding to do this on weekends. Like, there's a lot of people in the general population, so you get kind of nervous around groups yeah. and stuff like that. That's where we met this inmate, who prison officials asked us not to identify. He's been in segregation for one year after getting caught selling narcotics inside prison walls. He's on the cusp of getting out of segregation and back into general population. And do you feel like you're getting the help to transition back into general population? Yes. You are. But, like, all right, so, the, yes, there's help, and, but how do you help? I don't know how to help uh, by me, like, feeling nervous to go back. Not, not because of anybody, not, not because of safety, because it's safe. It, I know it's safe. Yeah. They do their job. They keep us all safe, but... Like, just have anxiety issues, like, of being in crowds, so right. I don't know how to, like, fix that. There are step-downs where you'll be participating in groups, so there will be more and more people with whom you interact, and when you get back to general population, it won't be going from A to Z. Yeah. You yeah. will have gone through those steps. What was that year like? That year, like, uh, um, I lost my mind. Former inmate Edwin Rivera admits he was a problem prisoner while serving time for murder at the ACI and found himself locked up in segregation several times. Yeah, we should get punished if we do a crime. Go to segregation, do a little time, but do a year in segregation, it kill us inside of us. Segregation is particularly tricky for inmates with mental illness. The Department of Corrections says 15 to 17 percent of all inmates have what they deem serious and persistent mental illness. But to stick a man in the cell. Some do find themselves in segregation, though Director A.T. Wall claims they have waived disciplinary confinement for mentally ill inmates. Wouldn't want you to think or the public to think that people are simply brought into these situations without a good reason that they are not being dealt with and treated while they're here and that they're being kept for no good reason. We're more professional than that. On the day Target 12 was given a tour, we were told there were 165 inmates in restrictive housing. Kind of. Prison officials say as of now, the longest serving inmate in segregation has been there for three years. We have to have a place to put those who prey on others, who are disruptive in very serious ways with severe consequences. We have to put them in a place that separates them from the rest of the institution so that the institution will be safe. Some lawmakers want to put strict limits on when and how long prison officials can use segregation. New at six, the debate, what both sides say changes would mean to prison safety. With the Target 12 investigators, Tim White, Eyewitness News.
New details now in a Target 12 investigators exclusive inside solitary. We were given exclusive access to the high security facility at the state's prison. A firsthand look at how some problem inmates are kept alone in a cell for 23 hours a day. New at 6, the head of the ACI reacts to a bill that would put strict limits on how and when inmates are placed into restrictive housing. Target 12 investigator Tim White got access to segregation units at the ACI. He's here now with the details. Advocates for change say inmates put into segregation may come out worse than when they went in, but prison officials here at the ACI say it's not the depiction of the whole you're used to seeing in the movies. Don't call it solitary confinement to Department of Corrections Director A.T. Wall. We struggle to make ourselves understood when people latch on to the term solitary confinement or segregation. We don't think it reflects our practices here. These cells at the ACI's high security are for inmates who officials say but to stick a man in a cell. need to be separated from the prison's general population. Locked up 23 hours a day, most for disciplinary violations. Monday through Friday, inmates in restrictive housing are supposed to be let out into this caged-in rec area outside their cells for one hour. Might not be widely known. This former inmate, who asked not to be named, has spent time in segregation once for fighting. In prison, it, it's, uh, it's not like it is out here. It, it's difficult, you know. Um, sometimes you can't just walk away. He says he thinks segregation gets in the way of rehabilitation. I wouldn't want somebody who had been in seg for five years and wraps up their sentence from segregation moving into the house next to mine. I don't know about you, but I, I wouldn't want that. The United Nations Special Rapporteur on Torture to designate the use of solitary over 15 days as amounting to torture, and we're doing that, the state of Rhode Island is doing that every day to our citizens at the ACI. State Representative Aaron Regenberg has filed legislation that would dramatically alter the use of segregation. The bill calls for a cap of no more than 15 days in most cases that an inmate can be placed in disciplinary confinement and limits who can be locked away. There are ways that we can be addressing the behavioral issues, the mental health issues um, that send folks to segregation more humanely and more effectively. There are some people for whom a couple of days is sufficient and as much as they can handle. There are others who, for whom 15 days is not enough. They continue to be angry, predatory, violent. A.T. Wall says the Department of Corrections is examining their policies and procedures regarding restrictive housing and may make changes, but he opposes putting anything into law. We can't simply open the doors because a statute has said this is the limit of time we can hold you. If something happens, we're responsible. Right now, we're told the longest serving inmate in administrative confinement has been there for three years. And A.T. Wall tells us because of their step down programs, it is very rare that a prisoner in segregation is released right to freedom. With the Target 12 investigators, Tim White, Eyewitness News.